Hey there! So I finally am getting on here to make this video for you all. It's going to be basically our mobility class um, so that you can run through it along with me if you like or just use it as a way to refresh your memory of some of the exercises that we did. As I think of more of the exercises that we've done in the past, I will make more videos and post some of those. And also myself and my partner Matt are interested in making additional videos about movement and mobility, so you'll be seeing those soon. So this is for anyone, but I recently taught a mobility class and am now no longer teaching it, so I wanted to give those students access to some of the exercises, but if you weren't part of that class and are watching this video, I'm excited to show them to you as well. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave those. So let's get started. Um, if you have been one of my students, you know that we start either sitting or standing, so you can choose whatever's comfortable for you. I am going to stand today, and we're going to find a position where our feet are right underneath our knees, knees right underneath our hips, hips right underneath our shoulders, and then our head floating on top of all of it. In order to bring all of that into alignment, it's helpful to me to bend and straighten my knees a little bit to kind of feel into where my weight is distributed along my foot. Maybe it's a little forward, maybe it's a little back. You can rock back and forth and attempt to find a middle place where the weight is distributed evenly across the bottom of your foot. Tucking the tailbone under ever so slightly just to bring into alignment the spine which in addition you will tuck your chin down ever so slightly as well and feel into the length of energy and alignment in the bones from feet to head, arms resting at our side. And as you're finding that, just being with your breath, no need to change it. But I like to align my in-breath with the feeling of elongation and spaciousness. And using the exhale as a way of grounding and rooting and receiving the floor with my body and my either through my feet or through my seat, if I am in a seated position, so that the part of standing that isn't so much an action for us, but a process of being received by what we're standing or sitting on, fully engaging in being received in that way. <clears throat> as you come into this alignment, once you start to feel it kind of all click into place, just breathing. And allowing your body, your heart and your mind to receive that space, to come into that space. Now, you can start to notice if there's any tension, tight points, relaxed points. Um, any places that feel held, um, either held as in supported or held as in kind of um, bound. 
around somehow <clears throat> and just start to kind of take a log of what you're noticing in your body. Again, we're not going to immediately try to change it, but just noticing how your body is showing up. No judgment. Welcoming everything that's here. And then once you've taken a note of one or several of those types of spaces, we're going to draw our breath in and hold it for a moment and really enrich it with your own power and capacity to support and heal yourself. And then as you exhale, imagine, although you're exhaling the breath out, imagine grounding and drawing that all the way through your body. On the next inhale, you're going to also breathe it in through your body in another sort of direction, but it's still originating from you. You're not drawing it from outside of you. I want you to feel this cyclical nature of your breath distributing that capacity and that power through all parts of your body, particularly those that you've noted could benefit from. Great. Okay, so we're going to move a little bit. I'm feeling a lot of energy around my wrists in this moment, so we're going to do little wrist circles. As I often talk about in class, we're not so much trying to achieve like a deeper level of flexibility um, for this purpose of contemplating mobility, but imagining moving in a way that generates some spaciousness in whatever part of the body we're moving. That's why it's important to be incorporating our breath because the breath is connected to blood flow, is connected to creation of tissues, connected to our body's ability to filter, and so many functions of our body that the breath can really be used as a means of creating that space so that everything that moves through our body can move through more efficiently and effectively. Just holding that intention in our mind as we're moving our wrists. Both directions. And now we're going to expand it to our elbows. Also, if you yawn like I just did, that is common. That's your body's response to wanting the oxygen, <laughs> using the oxygen. Both directions. And then opening it up through our shoulders. So I'm doing slow circles, but really hitting the edges of my flexibility through my shoulders, which I don't have a ton of flexibility in my shoulders, but I'm attempting to expand just to that edge of stretching in that way of kind of supporting that opening up and not straining it. And other direction. Holding in our minds space. Shoot that out. And now we're going to roll our neck to one 
one direction. Being really gentle, going back, just letting it fall slightly back. But again, similar to the shoulders, I'm really feeling the tension in my neck, but kind of riding along the edge of that tension so that I'm feeling a little bit of a stretch ever so gently and continuing to use my breath to release and relax other direction rotating the shoulders kind of moving the fingers as I'm doing this other direction and I can feel the blood really flowing we're going to do single arm swings forward and back and again kind of using the centrifugal force that I can feel the weight of my hand pulling my shoulder forward and back <clears throat> and letting gravity just pull it down. I'm breathing and I'm imagining that tension releasing and that space being created in my shoulder. Other side. back to that stance, feet right below our knees, knees below our hips, hips below our shoulders, head floating on top, and we're going to do little twists. And my twists are initiated through my waist and rib cage. My hips are actually attempting to stay square to the front and I'm twisting from my middle through my ribs and my shoulders are opening up to each side and the arms just flop. They're connected to the shoulders, so when the shoulders move, the arms move. Breathing. In Chinese medicine, they talk a lot about that ringing sensation. So whenever I'm doing twists, I imagine ringing out the spine and we're going to allow to drain out of our body as we ring our spine, whatever wants to be released. Letting it flow down our bodies, being received by the earth. Remembering that this twisting of the spine ends with our head. So as our shoulders turn, our head will continue that rotation ever so slightly before we continue twisting in the other direction. Now we're going to bring our arms up. We're going to widen our stance a little bit. I'm still stabilizing my hips towards the front, but I'm letting this motion really expand through my shoulder blades is where I'm feeling it a lot as they slide across my back. And so as I'm coming forward and across, this shoulder blade slides forward and creates an opening in my back. And the other one is sliding closed and opening up the front of my chest on the opposite side. And so there's a simultaneous opening and closing that's true about twisting. And breathe. And bring that to a rest. A lot 
of energy moving, so I'm going to just bring my feet right underneath my hips again, come back to that stable sensation, even drawing my hands down by my hips, palms facing the floor, energetically stabilizing and rooting. a little bit, just doing little circles. Other direction. side to side and with hips going side to side I often talk about how I'm not just pouring my weight into the hip I'm really still rooting my feet through the ground and then lifting my hip while while clo while collapsing my rib cage on that side so that they kind of like meet so the hip and the shoulder are reaching towards one another and what's helpful in this, this hip action, as we call it in ballroom, um, is the bending and straightening of the knees. That is actually what produces that motion. So I'm bending, in this instance, my left knee, my right leg is straightening while I'm keeping my shoulder straight. So inherently, this hip is getting closer to my shoulder. bending this leg, I'm straightening this leg, and this shoulder and hip come together on this side. Then I switch sides, this leg starts to bend, the hip and the shoulder move away from each other while this hip and shoulder move towards each other. Play around with it, it's kind of confusing, it's kind of weird, but it's interesting to feel into the difference between that. Same with bringing our hips forward and back. We're lifting through the front and then lifting in the back. And our chest can come forward a little bit to feel the hips and the shoulders coming close to each other on the front and then hips and shoulders coming close to each other in the back. And that's the sensation we want to feel rather than just going like this. Great, okay. Now we're gonna stand with our feet slightly apart. And what we're gonna do is bend the knees slightly and we're going to lift a knee, place it back down. Lift and down, lift and down, lift and down. You don't have to lift the knee any particular height, just as far as you're comfortable. It can just be very low. This is a mobility exercise for your hip, but for the standing leg, it's a balance exercise. And balance is a huge piece of mobility. I'm engaging my core quite a bit. I'm keeping my upper body upright. Now we're going to do little kicks to the back. You can touch to the ground to help you with balance or you can put your hands on a chair. But we're just lifting and touch, lift, touch, lift, touch. And again, you're needing to utilize that standing leg to balance on. Switch legs. up, flat back over, and just fall forward into a forward bend. Really try to let your upper body pour over your legs. You can
can clasp your arms at each other and hang down to create a greater sense of weight. And you can sway from side to side if that feels good. And breathe. Bend and straighten your knees a few times. And slowly roll up. Roll the ankles a little bit. You can sit for this to have greater balance or engage your balance on that standing leg again as you rotate your ankle in both directions. Switch. Actually do one last thing with the feet. I'm going to curl my toes under and stretch out the front of my foot. So it's like I'm, I'm pointing my toe and then placing the tops of my toes on the ground to just feel that stretch through the top of my foot. And then you can go in the other direction ball of the foot on the ground and just press into it to feel the underside of your toes get a little stretch. Even doing it with your foot a little bit behind you can give you a deeper stretch. Other foot. side of the toes. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to bring this session to a close with a little bit of Qigong, which is how we tend to end our mobility class. So you want to come back to that stance, fully stacked, Hands, palms facing down. <clears throat> Returning to that sense of stability through our feet and our hands. And breathing. So we do very simple, bringing the hands up to the shoulders, bringing them down. We just created all that space in our body by doing those movements. Qigong is an excellent way to move energy very intentionally through your body as a means of clearing any blockages there may be, but I also find when I engage in movement and create a lot of space in my body, it feels really good to move energy through it, kind of like flushing the system. And so again, my feet are really engaged on the ground, I'm feeling them draining, drawing that energy out. After these exercises, you can even go wash your feet as a practice of promoting that draining and cleaning energy. And then breathing in and out. And then press forward.
sides. up and down the sides Up the sides, down the middle. Pausing at the hips, we're going to draw one hand up and then let them pass each other. I'm gonna expand this to kind of draw to each side as we do it. So it's gonna go all the way down, one leg up the upper body. When I do a video with Matt, he will speak quite elegant, elegantly to all of this. <laughs> I speak very simply to all of it, but essentially pressing down through the leg and opening through the chest. This is a variation on an exercise Matt taught me, but just suddenly felt right. Again, it comes back to that twisting energy. And then draw it up and down. I feel a lot of warmth in my hands. I feel a lot of gratitude for you all for moving with me, whether you've attended my class or just stumbled across this video. I'm glad you're here. up, flat back over, and hang forward, forward bend, just let it all release and relax. And as we roll up, we're going to just give a little tap to our ankles, our knees, our legs. going to brush. So brush the face, brushing down the neck. taking your hands and just tapping the floor. One hand on your heart, 
one hand on your belly, just a few closing deep breaths all together. Inhale. And exhale. And again. Last one, switch your hands. I lied, we're gonna do one more breath. So much. So just a few of the exercises that we've done. I will post more videos with other exercises, but that's just intuitively what came to me in this moment and wanted to offer something up to you all in gratitude. Um, as you can see behind me, I've got a bunch of plant babies, so I'm feeling that spring energy and they're all just seeds right now, but I'm excited to see what comes up and that feels like a really powerful metaphor for this time and a hopeful metaphor for this time that has been challenging for a long, long time. And so I'm thinking of you all. Thank you and more to come soon. Thank you so much. Take care.